Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to compute the mean of columns and rows in a matrix or in a data frame. As you can imagine, this video is very similar to the previous video about how to compute the sum of columns and rows in a data frame. But in this case, I'm going to show a trick to compute the mean of the columns in a data frame in a very fast way. Let's start. First of all, let's load the depart package. Now, as in the previous case, I'm going to show you two ways, one with the base package and then with the dplat package. So uh, let's start by generating this matrix. And now, if we apply the summary function to the matrix, we get the main statistics for the columns. And as you can see here, we already got the mean. So this is the mean for the first column, for the second column, and for the third column. Now, if we want just the mean, column means for the for the columns, and this one for the rows. Now, as you can see here, we got the same result. And now you may think, what's the difference here? Better column means because we just we just got back only the result for the for the mean. But the issue is that, as we will see in a moment, this is very convenient when we will work with the data frame. So now let's see. This is the same code as last time. Now I'm just changing here the function to the mean. Add margins. This one. We got the mean for the three columns. For the values, remember the values in the three columns. So column one, column two, and column three. And this one for the rows. So this is the mean of the first row, second row, third row, and fourth row, and so on. So now let's move to data frame. As you can see again, all means, row means, they work the same. And as last time, let's add a column. This column V4 with value a and b. So this column is not numeric. But this time let's turn this column as a factor. You can see we have v1, v2 and v3 are numeric and we have v4 it's a factor. Now what happens if we try to compute the mean in this way just using call means? And as last time we got an error. X must be numeric. And this again is this one. V4 is not numeric. But this is the trick now that I was talking about before. If we use now the summary function, as you can see, we got the statistics. In this case, we got the mean for the three columns. And in the case of the factor, see that R uh, will count how many A and B. Uh, there are in, the, in, in column V, in column V4. You can see this way, if we are interested in getting the, the mean in the columns, this is summary function does the trick in a very fast way. Now let's continue. And in this case, we are really applying the same, uh, the same code as in the last video. We're just replacing uh, Call, uh, call sum with call means, row sum with row means. You can see here. So I'm not really going to explain because this code, we have already talked about this code in the previous video. Now, with the dplar package, we got the, the mean of the, the values in the three columns here. We are going to bind here to the row. In this one, compute the, the mean of the values in the rows. Okay, so if we want to try with a real data set, let's use the iris data set. This is the data set, so we have here numeric values and here the last column is the spaces 
So again, uh, let's work on a copy. Again, if we apply the summary function, we already have the mean of the three, uh, the values in the three columns, and we know that we have 50 of uh, each of these species. If we want to use the, the base package called means uh, row means, we have to select the columns in this case. And again, here we are just in reordering the columns. So, as you notice, I moved the species column in the first column. This is just to show you again, if you remember, that in this case, we need to place the missing value in the first column because in this case, we are going to, uh, to row bind the original data set with this operation. In this operation, I remind you, we have only four values here. The means of these four columns. So we need this and A to be placed here to row bind. This for this case we are C binding, so we are adding a new column that we are calling mean row here. One we have done. Let's move to the plot package. That's the original data set. And again here. And now remember that the difference here is that the bind underscore rows will uh, set the missing value for us. So comparing with the R bind, we don't need to care about where to place the missing value. In this case, again, I am reordering. In this case, you see I'm placing the species column in the second column. And again, if I implement the same code here with bind underscore rows, you see the missing value will be placed in the column of the species. The, the mean of these columns. This is for the rows. Okay. Now, let me conclude this video uh, by showing you this difference here. What's the difference between this code here and this code here? Okay, let me reset the data set. So we have the F, let's just see. Yeah. So this is the first entry. Six rows of the data set. Now, I want to just show because I'm not sure that I said this in the last video. What is what do we do here? When we run this, as you can see, we compute the mean, but we are just printing the result. What, what does that mean? Can we now check add? As you can see, we don't have mean row because we didn't store this operation. On the other hand, here, we are storing the, this operation in this dataset. So basically we are replacing the DF dataset. If we run this, we check head, as you can see, we have the mean row code. And I hope this is useful. If you enjoyed this video, see you in the next one.